Hey, what's going on there guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG, and today we are going to be cracking open another one of the intro packs from Theros. Today we have the blue and red one. It's the Manipulative Monstrosities intro pack. And in this intro pack, you get a pre-built 60 card deck and two sealed 15 card booster packs from Theros and some how to play guides. So let's open this on up and we are going to see just what we get. So we'll toss all of this off to the side, take the deck out, and inside of here we have our two booster packs. We have an insert and another insert. So with the first insert, it is going to fold out, and it talks about Theros and the set. And it also has a list of the decks. And the deck list for each of the intro packs for those of you guys that are interested. However, you can just find the deck lists for the intro packs online as well. And I have the uh, the deck lists in the description as well, at least for this one and uh, the other ones that I've done so far. And uh, there's also a insert for how to play Magic for you guys that are completely brand new to the game and don't know anything about the. Uh, how to play magic or anything like that. Uh, we have our two booster packs here and our deck. And these intro packs are probably best for new players. Anybody that really doesn't have a huge collection of Magic the Gathering cards and you just kind of want to get started but you don't know where, intro packs are probably the best bet. It's the easiest way to get into the game. You already have a pre-built deck and you get some booster packs too. So let's see what we have. So our first card is the Shipbreaker Kraken. It is a 6646 six, and it has Monstrous 4 for seven, or for 8 mana actually, 6 generic and double blue. And whenever it becomes monstrous, tap up to 4 target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's uh, untap step for as long as you control Shipbreaker Kraken. Pretty nice big fat guy for us. We have Coral Merfolk. We can get some focus there, kind of, maybe. There we go. Autofocus is just lagging out. Uh, so we have two of those. Uh, we have Omen Speaker. We have two Omen Speakers in here. Uh, Burnished Heart to be able to ramp us into our big cards. Uh, Cackling Triton, or Crackling Triton, actually. Two of those. We have Wall of Frost, Ill Tempered Cyclops. We have Archaeomancer, we have another one, Water Servant, Sea Lock Monster, and another Sea Lock Monster, uh, Stone Shock Giant, another Stone Shock Giant. So it seems like there is a fair bit of monstrous going on. So if we can pull any cards from out of here that either let us like ramp, uh, like the Burnished Heart, or anything that could be like a just a better monstrous creature for red or blue, uh, we could definitely. Uh, find a way to put it in here. Uh, we have our basics, so we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 islands. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, mountains, so 26 total. Uh, which seems probably about fair. Maybe we can cut one of them to take it down to 25 depending on uh, depending on what we end up having here total. Uh, then we have a loss in the Labyrinth. We have Shock, two Shocks, Disperse, Lightning Strike. Uh, we have Magma Jet, Ordeal of Perforos. We have Dissolve, Grip Tide. We have Rage of Perforos. Another Rage of Perforos. Sea God's Revenge. Uh, Curse of the Swine, our other rare in here. You always get one foil rare and one uh, other rare aside from it in the pre-built deck. So Curse of the Swine is our rare. And Volcanic Geyser. So looks pretty sweet. Let me just sort things back out here. Just so we get the... Uh, the big fat guy on top here, our Shipbreaker Kraken. And now let's open up the packs and see if we can pull anything that will help us out here for this red and blue deck. 
So we have March of the Returned. We have another Lightning Strike. That's definitely useful. Uh, we have a Flesh Mad Steed. We have Calvary Pegasus, Voyage's End, which could be playable for us here. Uh, we have a Citizen Battle Priest, Baleful Eidolon. Uh, we have the Giant, the Benthic Giant. That could be playable, maybe. Uh, a Null, which could be playable. It counters artifacts or enchantments. It's a counter spell for us. It could be used in our sideboard, which is uh, a, a group of up to 15 cards that you get to use between um, games in a match whenever you're playing up against an opponent, and between games one and two, and games two and three, you can side in cards like a Null if they're relevant for you if you're playing like competitive magic. Uh, we have Traveling Philosopher. Mogus's Marauder. We have Horizon Chimera. Favorite Hoplite. Uh, we have another Shipbreaker Kraken. Nice. So that's definitely something cool. Uh, then we have a Plains and a Harpy. So, do we get anything else? No. Surprisingly, this pack has a lot of, a lot of black in it. And a lot of white as well. That's kind of odd. No green. Or, well, I guess the Horizon Chimera. But that's kind of weird. Let's see what we have in this pack here. We have Messenger's Speed. We have God's Willing. We have Savage Surge. Opaline Unicorn could be useful for us. Uh, we have Unknown Shores. Uh, Crackling Triton. That could be useful. Portent of Betrayal. Uh, that could be useful as well. Commune with the Gods. Return Phalanx. Heliod's Emissary. Which is I. We have Insatiable Harpy. And Temple of Silence is our rare. Pretty nice. Uh, it taps for white or black to our mana pool, enters the battlefield tapped, and whenever it enters the battlefield, we get the scry one. So it's better than a guild gate for you guys that have played through uh, Return to Ravnica block. You'll know and be familiar with the guild gates, hopefully. Uh, so it's like a better guild gate at rare at a rare rarity. And then we have a foil, Nylea's Disciple. And a forest and a uh, insert add thingamajigger. All right, so uh, out of here, we actually <laughs> didn't get anything that is quite useful for us uh, out of the rest of the stuff here. Uh, we do have the uh, the Triton and the Portent, uh, which is definitely uh, it's something. So let's see what we can do here in terms of cards. Uh, Messenger Speed isn't all that amazing for us. In this deck, we would rather play other things. It's just not necessary. Uh, so out of here, things that would be pretty awesome would be like Lightning Strike. We can add that in. It's another burn spell for us. Um, the Opaline Unicorn could help us out. It's not as good as the uh, the Burnished um, Heart, but it's just kind of different. It's reusable. It adds one mana of any color to our mana pool. And uh, it's going to allow us to ramp a little bit. So we have two things that we can ramp with there. Uh, the Null would probably be in the sideboard more than anything else. But we do have another Shipbreaker Kraken, which is really cool. Uh, Voyage's End is probably useful. Uh, the Giant, maybe not. Uh, but the Triton and the Fortin of Betrayal, those are cards that I would like to use in here. So, uh, let's see. In terms of lands... We only go up to six, and our converted mana cost curve doesn't seem too heavy in like six drops or anything like that. So we could probably just cut one of the lands out of here, and I would probably be more willing to cut a island just because we have more of them. We do have more blue spells um, in here. That's how they get the the ratio of islands to um, to mountains, but we can probably get around not having as many islands in here and what we can do with it is we can actually just put the opaline unicorn in so it kind of like replaces itself it makes up for the fact that we're taking out a land but we're also adding a card that is going to allow us to ramp a little bit which is definitely nice so we have the heart and we have the opaline unicorn um for the rest of the stuff in here i'm actually not too thrilled about the coral merfolk uh they're two one for two creatures and that's all right but i would much rather have something else like pretty much anything else other than that um so what i would probably do is i would probably grab the uh, the 
Crackling Triton, and I would put that in here instead, just so we have three of those. That's pretty fine for us. And then what we can do is we can add in a Lightning Strike so that we have three of them now. And uh, we have a little bit more removal in our deck, and we get rid of these two guys. Uh, then for the rest of the stuff that's remaining, we have the Porton, we have the Voyager's End, and we have Shipbreaker Kraken. Or Kraken. Um, so for the rest of that, I don't know, a lot of this stuff in this deck is actually fairly solid. Uh, maybe Lost in the Labyrinth. Um, rather than giving a creature minus three, minus O oh, and getting Descry, I would probably rather return it to its owner's hand and get Descry for just one more mana. So that seems about appropriate to uh, switch out the Voyage's End for that. Um, otherwise, the Kraken. Mm, I, I need to put that in here somehow. So... What I would end up taking out... Sea God's Revenge is pretty cool. I like that. Um, maybe the Rage. The Rage is a little bit expensive. So maybe the Rage, we take that out. And we get to put another Shipbreaker Kraken. That way we at least have... We, we at least have another bomb that we can play out of this deck. So in terms of creatures, we go up to 6 for our converted mana cost curve. But that's all right, because we have ways to fix what's going on. We have the Omen Speakers with Scry that are going to help us out. Uh, we also have a few other Scry cards in here, like the Magma Jet. Now, we only have one of those. I thought we had more. Uh, I thought we had at least two of them. But we do have Dissolve. Dissolve lets us Scry as well. Um, Rage of Furfros lets us Scry. Sea God's Revenge lets us Scry. And then Curse of the Swine is a nice removal for us. Um, Portent of Betrayal... Is there really a spot for us to be able to sneak this in? Probably not. This this card is good, but at the same time, it could be useful just in the sideboard to have it. Whenever your opponent's playing big creatures themselves, then you can um, side this in. You play it in game two and game three, or game two, hopefully, if you won game one. That way, you just win the match. But um, important of Betrayal, just to be able to take one of your opponent's creatures and use it against them is pretty nice. You also get the scry as well, so that's definitely a plus side to it as well. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty solid for us. If you guys have things like Thassa, Thassa would be pretty cool in this deck because you already have things like Wall of Frost and, um, you already have, like, a pretty decent Devotion to Blue going on, like, with Archaeomancers, Water Servant, and the Sea Lock Monsters. So, Thassa would be something to consider putting in this deck. It, it would probably work pretty well and it would be a cool card to have. Um, you could also add Perforos in here. Perforos would be pretty cool as well. It makes your creatures be a little bit more uh, threatening, even though you can't really get the, uh, the devotion off very often. Uh, just having your creatures deal two damage every time they enter in isn't bad. Uh, it's pretty useful as well, and you can go and play like Curse of the Swine on your creatures that you already have on the battlefield. Exile them, and you make uh, more 2-2s two that are going to enter the battlefield under your control. That way, triggering off Perforos and giving you a little bit of value. Especially if it's, like, for the win. Um, if it's for, like, any amount of damage that'll win you the game. It's just kind of a cool interaction. But uh, it's this is a pretty sweet deck. I really like blue, red, monstrous, and you have, like, counter spells and burn and whatnot. Just, like, counter burn, monstrous, big sea monsters. Uh, it's definitely a sweet deck. So, uh, what we got in terms of rares... Uh, we got the uh, the Shipbreaker Kraken, and we got Curse of the Swine out of the deck. We also got another Shipbreaker Kraken, and we got Temple of Silence for our other rare out of the pack. But uh, that pretty much concludes our video here of the unboxing of the intro pack. So if you guys enjoyed it, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Magic the Gathering content. And until next time, guys, peace out.